Thank you very much. So thank you for attending the, the presentation. I'm, uh, I'm Tom Corlitas. I'm a long, long time contributor to uh, uh, open source software and, uh, and open standards for that matter. And today I will give you an update on the PyCSW project. I'll walk through an introduction to the project for those who are not familiar, and uh, um, as well as the features, how it's, how it's put together, um, how you can uh, install it, uh, news on latest developments and what's been going on in the, uh, in the project as well as uh, selected projects and deployment and what we're seeing for the, uh, for the future. PyCSW is an OGC API records and an OGC CSW server implementation written in, uh, written in Python. It was originally a long time CSW server uh, implementation, but with the uh, emergence of the OGC API standards, we've also naturally implemented uh, OGC, uh, OGC API records. It's an open source project, obviously, it runs on all platforms, and we became an OSGO project in 2015. We fully implement the, uh, the OGC CSW specification, we're OGC compliant, and we're also a, uh, a reference implementation. There we are. And our, we're also aiming to become a reference implementation for OGC API records. So we're heavily involved in, uh, in implementing the standards, obviously, and we're, uh, we're also on the standards working groups at OGC for implementing these uh, standards and software. So it started quite a while back in, uh, in 2010, and we sort of moved along as a, uh, uh, you know, a small project with a, with a very uh, strict focus on, on geospatial uh, metadata. We did our 1.0 in, uh, in 2011, and then we, we became included in uh, OSGO Live. So anybody who has an open source project, getting your project onto OSGO Live is a, is a very good idea for exposure and improving the software um, because more users can uh, have a platform to use it. We became OGC compliant in 2013 and uh, um, we, we then started powering the data.gov in, uh, in the US, their, uh, their platform and their catalog, which was, uh, which was quite a milestone. And we became a true OSTO project in 2015, as I mentioned. Uh, we've carried on. We're, uh, um, at this point, we're, we're focused on the API records and stack implementations, um, as, well as, uh, as well as some partner specifications around those. The goal of the project is to have a lightweight catalog. The, the, the idea is not to have a full-blown user interface or a web application. Um, PyCSW has always been uh, what we call a headless uh, or, or no GUI, so the, the idea is that um, metadata can be easily managed through, uh, through PyCSW, either through its, the, the, the native way to access uh, things and work with things through PyCSW, so we have a command line interface that you can use. Um, the, the other benefit here is that it's very easy to embed and integrate PyCSW into other applications, which, it, which is where it actually uh, starts to shine in that it's used in a lot of downstream applications such as CCAN and GeoNode and other, uh, and other types of open data and, and metadata cataloging software. So that's the idea. And we want to be lightweight, flexible, and extensible. All those good words. Here are all the, the, the laundry list of standards that we, uh, that we support. We provide a, uh, a flexible repository configuration, so you can have a, uh, a SQLite, Postgres, uh, PostgreSQL, MySQL, um, Oracle, if you wish. So we do have a, an abstraction which allows you to uh, create the model in any relational database. We are also working on uh, NoSQL no support, which we've, uh, which we've initially implemented as part of the, uh, the sprint this year. There's, a, again, an official list of all the standards, which includes the OGC API standards as well. Lots of standards. How is it put together? We have a core library in PyCSW, which does all the request handling for the CSW specification. So somebody makes a request to the server, the server basically takes the request and uh, uh, queries the metadata repository, and it returns the, the metadata in whatever format the user asks for. So metadata um, in PyCSW is managed in a database, and it is assembled 
uh, on the fly and transformed on the fly with, uh, with requests. So um, when, we, when we ingest metadata, let's say an ISO document, we uh, shred the document and we put it into a relational model. And then when, we, uh, when a user does a query and asks for results back, we assemble that data, that metadata into, into a given format as per the user's request. We also have some caching mechanisms to help, uh, to help with uh, performance based on the, the native incoming uh, metadata format. That's also, uh, that's also a possibility. And that's basically the software architecture. So again, we have the library. Uh, we use a lot of different packages, uh, so PyProj, OWS Lib, uh, Shapely. Um, we stand on the shoulders of many, uh, uh, you know, very powerful open source projects, and in that, we're able to quickly provide uh, a lightweight catalog solution. Very easy to install, so you can install it from uh, from PyPy, Python package index. We also have. Um, Debian and Ubuntu packages, and we're on the Ubuntu GIS distributions, um, as well as other uh, as well as other distributions. So it was important for us from the beginning to have uh, a stable and wide distribution channel. I think we're also on Conda as well, if I'm not mistaken. This is the four-minute install or the impatient install for people like me. It's very easy to put something like this together and uh, load your metadata and get it running. So this is where I mentioned the command line interface. So if you're uh, comfortable with the command line, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward to, uh, to set up a server in a few minutes. We do have uh, uh, cloud support, so we, we do have a Docker image that we, uh, that we make available, and we have some uh, um, sample Kubernetes uh, configurations available on GitHub as well as, well as Helm charts. So, we didn't start as a cloud project, given, uh, given the time that the project was, uh, was, was stood up, but uh, that, uh, the, the cloud native capabilities started to be added uh, over time through, uh, through Docker and other mechanisms. Latest development, so what's new with the project? Again, this is a long running project that's been going on for you know, over uh, 11 or 12 years now. So we are in a stable state and we continue to add new features and fix any uh, fix defects and we have a release management, we have a project steering committee, so it's a mature project. Um, we did have a code sprint in May, which uh, we, it was a virtual code sprint, which was, uh, which was fun. Um, it was a three day uh, code sprint, so we worked on a number of different things. We worked on uh, uh, solar uh, repository backends um, in terms of NoSQL support. We also started working on JSON storage so that means uh, not only ingesting XML and shredding it into a database, but ingesting JSON and shredding that into a database. And the reason we're doing that is because with the advent of new JSON-based metadata formats, such as the OGC API records, core model, as well as stack, uh, these, are moving to a, these are moving to a JSON representation. So it makes sense for us to support those and make those available. Um, we still need to support XML. And, and everything that, uh, that, that comes with it. So we also implemented XSLT transformation. So I mentioned before that we shred the metadata into a relational database and then we build it back up when, uh, when the user gets the result. Um, and that's sort of the default out of the box behavior. However, we also now support XSLT where some organizations have really custom XSLTs on how they, uh, on how they want their metadata transformed. So we also support that uh, now as a result. There was also some work done on security and access, fine-grained access control uh, during, the, during, the, during the sprint. So that was the second sprint that we've, uh, that we've ever, ever had in PyCSW. The first one was in uh, 2018. So we look forward to having uh, uh, one next year as well. Again, JSON support. So uh, this sets us up for the new generation of uh, OGC and, and other evolving specifications. Like I mentioned, the XSLT transformation. So in your configuration, you will basically uh, have, a, have a configuration set up which defines you know, the input metadata standard and the output uh, metadata standard. And you can define a path to where your XSLT is on, uh, on disk. And I should mention in the PyCSW configuration, we support environment variables. So for those of you who are on, on, on cloud deployments and cloud environments where 12 factor type things are very important, we, we support that approach as well. So 
We've implemented uh, common query language uh, support, or CQL. So this is a, uh, a part of the OGC API um, features specification. I can't remember whether it's part three or part four. Anyway, um, we've implemented this as part of, uh, uh, as part of another uh, project. But basically, we're using the PyGeo filter library. And you'll hear more about that uh, package in about an hour from Fabian, who's in the crowd here. Excellent. So this was really easy for us to implement. So I mentioned we stand on the shoulders of giants. So thank you very much for that. Uh, you've made our life very easy as a result. But this allows us to um, basically support the common query language uh, uh, specification. And you can do um, you know, simple text queries, as, as you see there, or more deep uh, and involved JSON queries. So CQL is um, the new style of the, uh, of the filter encoding specification that was traditionally in OGC, which was very heavily based and defined on, on, on XML. So this is a new iteration of that in JSON and, uh, and simple text. So we're, we now support that as well. Recent projects and deployments. So the so ESA has a Earth Observation Exploitation Platform Common, common Architecture. Uh, they have a common architecture. As part of that common architecture, there's a reference implementation that involves uh, uh, all the components of the common architecture from ingesting data, registering data, and providing data access mechanisms such as uh, uh, maps and, and coverages, as well as a catalog. So there's a concept called a resource catalog in, uh, in EOEPCA, and uh, PyCSW is powering the resource catalog. And it actually catalogs a number of different resources, not only uh, uh, metadata about data, but metadata about services and uh, custom uh, workflows and all sorts of different uh, types of metadata. And that's one thing that I, I probably should have mentioned at the beginning is that we, we support metadata for anything. It's not just metadata for data sets. You can have a metadata for a report, uh, any kind of metadata that you wish. And we, we um, we exemplified uh, working with that and, and putting that into motion here with this uh, uh, EOEPCA project. So that is also uh, free and open source. I think there's a lightning talk on EOEPCA, if I'm not mistaken, later on today or tomorrow. So I encourage folks to uh, go take a look at that. It's a really neat uh, project and the catalog is backed by, uh, by PyCSW just the same. The Norwegian Meteorological Institute uh, is a heavy user of, uh, of PyCSW, so they have a number of different um, projects and requirements in support of uh, their, local, um, their local projects as well as uh, global projects, so the Arctic Data Center as well as the uh, WMO Global Cryospheric Watch or GCW, so they, uh, um, they're heavy users of PyCSW as well as using the, uh, uh, the XSLT implementations. That organization has a lot of custom XSLTs with a lot of business logic uh, into them, which, uh, which was very important for, for, for them to have the XSLT support in, uh, in PyCSW. So they're a heavy user. And they have, again, ongoing work for uh, more output profiles. At the, Meteor at the Meteorological Service of Canada, uh, we're, as Canada, we're part of the, we're a member of the World Meteorological Organization, and we, uh, we support a catalog in support of the WMO information system. Um, and we're doing a, uh, we, we have a catalog which was uh, based on a different implementation. We've recently updated it to PyCSW, which supports the uh, WMO core metadata profile, which is an ISO profile. So that is, uh, that's online and it's in production and it's uh, operational. I do want to put a plug for uh, a, WIS, a WMO information uh, system project that a presentation that Dave Barry and I will make at uh, 12.30 later today and that will talk a little bit more about what our plans are for, uh, for WMO weather, climate, water, data exchange. Um, so that's today at 12.30. With regards uh, back to PyCSW, um, that's what powers our, our metadata catalog for international, uh, international discovery. Roadmap. So it's always, I guess it's always important to know where you're going as well as where you've come from. So we, uh, uh, we always try to have a roadmap. So one thing that's, that hasn't changed in PyCSW and probably never will change is our, is our um, um, 
dedication to standards. So standards are, are very key to interoperability um, and it allows us to sort of measure twice and cut once and help lower the barrier. So there's no difference here with regards to the OGC API standards, which, uh, which are, 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 are evolving. Um, we have a keynote on OSGO and OGC collaboration tomorrow morning, so I encourage folks who are interested in OGC and the recent OGC API efforts to come, uh, to come listen to that uh, the talk between uh, OSGO and OGC. So we're tightly tied with, uh, with the OGC API efforts, and uh, Angelos and I are part of the OGC API records, SWIG, so that helps us get an early view into the uh, specification as well as, uh, uh, as well as implementing the specification. So we, we, um, we attend a lot of the OGC code sprints, which are now uh, available for anybody to attend, and um, which, which includes uh, you know, open, any open source project. So not only are we part of the SWIG, but we participate in the actual code sprints. So it helps us iterate and make a, uh, 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 an early implementation of the standard. We also uh, have goals to fully support Stack. So I know Stack has been um, discussed, uh, has been presented many times here, even in the last uh, day. So we do support um, a minimal implementation of the Stack item and the Stack API. Uh, we continue to, to follow those specifications as they, uh, as they mature. So that's part of our footprint to be able to support Stack natively in PyCSW. So even though it's still called PyCSW, we, we support uh, an increasing number of, of metadata and discovery standards, which uh, are CSW or, or, or other things. Coming soon will be deep, deeper uh, JSON metadata and deeper uh, Earth observation support. So I mentioned the EOEPCA project uh, previously, the PyGeo filter uh, integration, and um, which which we have implemented, but it hasn't been formally released. We are planning on uh, doing a 3.0 uh, release of the software, but uh, we're actually waiting on where OGC will go and how, when uh, 1.0 of OGC API records uh, uh, materializes. So, right, so PyCSW3 will be uh, sort of a, a long-term release. So we, we're at 2.6, I believe, right now. So we do want to do a, a, a 3.0 and have a long-term release because we do want to support the CSW standard over time. We're, we're not dropping support of that uh, anytime soon, and um, uh, as well as the OGC API records project. Some people may ask, what's the difference between PyCSW and PyGeo API? Which I'm presenting PyGeo API in a few minutes. So. The, uh, the quick answer to that is that PyGeo API is, also supports OGC API records. It does not support CSW, um, and it does not support deep metadata sort of workflows. PyCSW does metadata transformation and met pure metadata management, so storing metadata in a repository and knowing how to work with what that metadata is all about. PyGeo API does not do that. It assumes that you've taken care of all of that uh, workflow and it just basically stuffs your, uh, manages your metadata. So PyCSW um, is, uh, uh, will, will perhaps will be a back end in PyGeo API to manage metadata, uh, which is then, which is then available. So it's, uh, that's, that's the easiest way I can, I can delineate things. So if you want sort of advanced and deep uh, functionality with regards to geospatial metadata, uh, discovery, search, and dissemination, um, PyCSW is, that's, that's the critical path for the, uh, for the project. We have a community, uh, we, we, you know, long-running mailing list, uh, uh, long-running uh, Gitter. We used to have an IRC channel, if people remember IRC, I think we're still on uh, I IRC. We're, again, we're totally in the, uh, totally in the open, obviously, and we're, uh, we have a number of different service providers. So if you need commercial support around the project with regards to uh, core implementation or deployment um, or other types of, uh, or, or training or workshops, there is a service provider's uh, capability for the, uh, for the project. So you're encouraged to get involved and, uh, and reach out to the community if you have uh, any questions or, or, or suggestions. I think we're at the 20-minute mark, and I thank you, everybody. <laughs>